California, the 32nd annual Shrine Game. Today's game is for the national championship between the Fullerton Hornets and the Taft Cougars. Fullerton is coming into this game with a 9-0-1 record, where Taft has won 20 in a row. So let's go down and look at the bands and have a great day here at Bakersfield. Making their way slowly down the track, coming up near midfield, and I can still see him rubbing that rabbit foot. Uh-oh, he w took time off to wave his hand. He's been rubbing that rabbit foot to bring on this good weather. There's nobody other than the general chairman of this potato bowl, Charles R. Chuck Plasser. Chuck, just keep on rubbing that rabbit foot, will you? Thank you. Fullerton Hornets with Coach Hal Sherbeck. Coach Sherbeck has been at Fullerton for 23 years. Since Coach Sherbeck arrived in Fullerton in 1961, his teams have won 80% of their games, 180 wins and only 48 losses and six ties. His teams have captured 13 conference championships with national titles in 1965 and 67. Coach Sherbeck is the country's winningest active JC coach. This year they have won nine and tied one. They will be going for their third national championship. Of course he has to have a lot of help and he does with not only a great booster club here as you can see they come out in force again today the sport supporting his team all year but he also has a terrific bunch of assistant coaches his defensive back coach is al fiola his offensive back coach is marv sampson the offensive line is glenn thomas the defensive line is jeff jefferson the defensive assistant is my bob michelle Defensive assistant Scott Forbes, offensive assistant Dick Campbell, offensive assistant John Terrick. He also has some more help from his trainer Bill Chambers, equipment man Norm Perez, and his SID Terry Hutchinson, and of course the team physician Dr. McFarland. If we can recognize them, we'll give you their name. Otherwise, those attending today, Mr. Hal Aaron. Mr. William L. Collins, Mr. Donald Diebel, Mr. Charlie Dodge, Mr. Nello Fox, Mr. Willard P. Gold, Mr. James M. Haley, and Mr. Harold C. Tabor. These gentlemen represent a portion of the core that has held this Shrine Club together for these many years, and they have experienced this classic as it has been put on for the last 32 years. Thank you, gentlemen. You have all done a fine job. We need a thing like that on a day that's raining. We don't need a fire engine to put out the fire. Hey, guys, give us a wave up here, would you, please? There you are. The old Shrine Potato Bowl fire engine. We use it once a year, whether we need it or not. Today, we didn't really need it. You're looking good down there, guys. Uh, units known as the Arabs under the direction of Noble Jim Tillett, the chairman, assisted by Noble Tom Mulligan, the co-chairman. It, it looks like the football had a little wear and tear. It's probably uh, reminiscent of one of these footballs after today's game. They're going to really root that ball around today. And I'll tell you, the funniest guys of all. Here they come. The clowns of the Kern County Shrine Club. What a unit. They're under the leadership of Noble Silas Stout, Chairman, and Noble Roy Amat, co-chairman.
Jackson. Sandy can't uh, expand his winning streak here in Sapphire. Excuse for the interruption. And win the state and national pickup. championship. License number 2-3-3-0-4. Your lights are on. Why not to start him today? Where's Hal Sherbeck? He's been in this uh, situation many, many times, so he doesn't get nervous anymore. He just wants to get out here and have his young men show what they can do. Keep this weather the way it is. I'm sure we're going to have a great ball game this afternoon. These guys are ready. I know they are.
14 to seven. Excellent first down tackle made by Link, uh, Liga of the Taft Cougars. That brings up the Hornets into a second and 10 situation. Second in from the 34. Guy at the bottom of your screen, Kenny Nash at the top in motion. Gary Rulin has a lot of time. Hits his man Palmer at the 30, and he's driven out of bounds at the 27 yard line, short of the first down. So, uh, bring up a third down, and the Hornets are on the move. They're gonna spot the ball at the 26 yard line. Again, using another back, Matt, Matt Palmer coming underneath the zone, and as he did last week against Cerritos, uh, knows what to do once he gets the ball. Matt came back holding that shoulder, now comes out of the game in favor of Ron Colleton, who's in there along with Sendejas. Sullivan left, guy right. Sendejas, the fullback, Swayze, the eye back. They give is to Colleton, flag on the play. He's stacked up. He's close to the first down, though. We're not sure the flag is on. John Guy of the Hornets indicates it's offsides against Taft, and again, they, they seem to be jumping. They're either trying to get a real quick break or there's some kind of a staggered count being used by Gary Rulin. John Guy has been officiating the Hornet wide receiver. <laughs> he he uh, indicates right away what he thinks it is. Now, that was a Sides, third down and two. Block. First down. As we see the call from the official. And on that third down and two, I believe Colleton was stopped short. That would have brought up a fourth down and a potential field goal attempt. Uh, but that penalty hurt the Cougar defense. It certainly did. It's going to bring out a first and 10 the ball at the 21 yard line. Carlton's deep in the eye for the Hornets. As you get a look at Gary Rulin. Carlton on the sweep. Tries to cut it upfield. He is stacked right there at the 21 yard line. Michael Willis making the play. Come up from his cornerback position. Cornerback's been very, very busy here on both sides. Willis, Breel, and Kelly, and Sauls getting a lot of action today. What looked like could have developed into a big play for the Hornets was stopped by the fine play of Michael Willis as he fought off the block, stepped up into the hole, and made the tackle. It looked like it was open for about five to 10 yards on, uh, at one time. Second nine, Swayze and Palmer back in there for the Hornets. Rulin back to pass. Rolling out a lot of time. Hits his man at the 11, that's Kenny Nash. And he stopped there, he is close to a first down. Ken Nash, number 80. Gary again, Gary Rulin moving to the right side, trying to give that offensive line time. We'll see him going to the right. Wally Turheimer uh, moving the pocket along with the offensive line. Good route run by Nash. He turned the corner back around on that side. Initially, there was good coverage. We have a Taft Cougar down on the field, but Nash did a, a real good job out there on the right-hand side. As he turned around, Archie Sauls, the left cornerback for the Taft Cougars. Hard hitting going on today. We've seen several players from both sides down on the turf. You can see the remnants of earlier rain, and the wind is abating a little bit here. Hornet cheerleaders trying to inspire the home crowd here, 14 to seven. Ruling, uh, excuse me, ruling on the day is 14 to 24, 144 yards as Donnie Pierce is helped off the field. Well, he's had pretty much under his own power. So it's another, gonna, excuse me, another third down and two situation as we had before here. And let's see if Gary goes, Gary Ruling goes to some kind of a staggered count. Hornets of three and nine on, on third down. That's Palmer in motion. Lone setback is Swayze. Sweep to Swayze. He has at least the first down. And he is dropped at the 10 yard line. Boy, I thought he was going to go for a touchdown there. And he's going to be dropped at about the nine yard line. Making the play, Michael Willis, who just came back from a uh, little injury. That's a first down for the Hornets. It's going to be first and goal. Damon Swayze, pitch out from Rulin. He may have hoped that he went to the inside, but as you say, uh, excellent play there. And really what looked like a touchdown uh, came up to about a two yard gain and, and barely a first down for the Hornets. Outstanding play for the right cornerback, Michael Willis. First and goal, the ball is just inside the 10 yard line. First and goal from the nine, we'll call it. Rulin. Has a man open, oh! And there's a flag and there's gonna be pass interference. 
Ruland trying to hit Kenny Nash in the end zone. He was hit by 17, uh, Cleo Miller. Miller's thinking he that... He uh, pass interference. Miller's thinking that he hit him as the ball got there. It was a uh, real close. Could have gone close. either way. Defensive pass on the front, incomplete. So not only does that give the Hornets uh, first uh, first down at the at the two, well I should say, gives the Hornets, not only does it give the, ball, the Hornets the ball at the two, but it gives them a first down at the two. The scoreboard says one, it's about one and a half. Warner in motion, Sandejas in there, and the give is to Swayze on the trap, touchdown Fullerton. But there is a flag on the play. I think it might be a holding call against the Hornets. I think it is against the Hornets because the extra point team is coming off. Well, those of, ne of the negative persuasion would might believe this was an evener, as they call it. Uh, the play goes to the right side. Holding was called on the left side of the Hornet line, and indeed, holding 58 white. That is the call on Nick Godovac, the center of the Hornets. You're at first and goal, the one yard line. Uh, of course, it's obvious to say that that's the last thing you could possibly want. A big break for the Cougar defense because Swayze was in for six. It's going to be first down again, first down and 11, first and goal on the 11-yard line. Nash split left, Guy split right, Sandejas in there for Palmer, and Swayze's deep in the eye. Sweep left to Swayze, cuts it upfield. He's still going down to about the seven-yard line. Swayze, nice cutback runner. That's really what he does best. He has good speed outside, but not like the world-class sprinters that Taft has. Taft playing a very, very tough defense. The excellent part of that Taft defense, besides their size, is their mobility. Uh, they get around very quickly. Again, number 18 from the cornerback position, Michael Willis, uh, got into that, turned it back inside, jumped inside to help make the tackle. Second and eight, second and goal on the eight yard line. Ruling back to pass, has Warner over the middle. Touchdown, Fullerton. I wasn't sure if Warner was in, but the Zebras say they are. They are, and it's touchdown Fullerton. Here's the look replay. at it. Gary Ruland's going to go back. Quick set over the middle. They've used it quite a bit today, and the freight train goes across for six. Dave Warner having a big day. Rick Frank to kick the extra point. It's 20 to 7. There's the snap. The spot. The kick is up. And good. That'll make it 21 to 7. Warner on the day, eight catches, 108 yards, two touchdowns. Big day for Dave Warner. So, Taft has only given up 10 points in the fourth quarter. And there goes seven right there. Hornets have not allowed anything in the fourth quarter. Not a point. Hornets are ahead 21 to seven and the national championship is 10 minutes and 27 seconds away. Again, the, the Taft Cougar offense has proved all year long they're capable of making the big plays, but in, under no circumstances do you want to be down 14 points to this Hornet defensive team. A team that's done it all year long, a team that on defense, set a school record against the rush. On the drive, 49 yards, seven plays, 459 taken up. Frank hits a strange little kick up to the third yard, three yard line, picked up by Francis. Francis trying to break it, he gets loose, and he'll be brought out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Mark Benedict Sorry. in on that play. Also number 48 for the Hornets, Tom Houts, who had his quarterback sack earlier on. So Taft will take over first and 10 at the 30 yard line. Uh, kind of a semi squibber, I guess we'll call it. Picked up at about the four yard line. He makes the initial break through the wedge. Tackle made there by Houts and company long as we said, number 81, Mark Benedict, 10-20 to go, 21 to seven. 
Tass has minus one yard on first down, minus one. New quarterback in there. Get the second back through, he's still going. That's Cook, he's up to the 44 yard line. New quarterback in there for Taft, it's number 15. Uh, Michael Perez, 6'2", 205 pound freshman. Right up through the middle, the first back, the full back out of that wing T option and tackle made there, but not before a lot of yardage is chewed up by that Taft offense. Taft on the move, first and 10, never count them out, ball on the 46 yard line. Perez, back to pass, hits his man at the 25, fumble. They're gonna say it was an incomplete incomplete pass. John Williams, the receiver, and boy, was there a hit put on by the Hornets. Garrett Breland, Rourke Kelly, whole bunch from there. Number 27 really puts the hit on Brian Owens, first team, all conference for the Hornets. Right there is a, a big shot, hangs on, does not hang on to the ball. It does stop the clock for the Taft Cougars, second down and 10. Mike Perez on the year. 13 of 32, a 40% completion record, Steve. Make it six down and 10, uh, second down and 10. Perez back to pass and Lance Winger hits him at the 35 yard line. Lance Winger making the big play there. Gosh, he's been good this season. Lance coming from the stand up defensive end position. Perez does not see him. They call that the blind side. He'll, he may remember that for a while. Lance Wingard has uh, had really an outstanding year for the Fullerton College Hornets from that left defensive end position, that time on the right side. Third down and 19. Perez back to pass. He's going to take it himself. He's still loose. Carrying the ball a little gingerly. He's up to the 50-yard line. He's well short of the first down. But that's going to pin the Hornets back on the punt a lot, a lot nicer. Big play by Mike Perez, and the Hornets defense gets a big hand coming off the field. Perez under trouble. He doesn't appear to be as mobile a quarterback as Kelly, but he gets the job done here. Comes short of the first down. We're talking about Lance Winger, the sophomore out of St. Paul. His father played here, along with um, Hornet defensive coach Al Fiola, way back for Pasadena in 1953. Like father, like son, Dave Moffat to do the kicking. And he sends up a high one. Brian Owens a call for the fair catch. He didn't want any part of that. And it goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. 25-yard We have another report now from Tony Smith. Yeah, he's had some cramping problems. There he goes taking off. He's trying to run him out. He'll probably be back in. I don't know. They may not need him. Also, Wayne Schweitzer went out. Uh, he tore up the uh, ankle in the first half, and he hasn't played much in the second half. He's gone for the game. Back to you, Lon. Steve. Thank you, Tony. John Guy was the first report on Tony Smith. First and 10, the ball on the 25 yard line. Corfield in motion. They give it to Swayze on the trap. Gets outside, and he gets up across the 30 for a nice gain on first down. The Hornets are averaging five and a half yards on first down. Taft, on the other hand, averaging 0.6 on the first down play. Hornet offense in the fourth quarter. Damon Swayze to the outside. The speed and mobility is uh, the, what they like about Damon Swayze. And as we've alluded to during the broadcast today, they, he's moving inside a, a lot more than he did at the beginning of the year. Here, Ruin, second and five at the 30. You also, you should they give it to Swayze again. He gets outside. And he's up to the 35. He's close to the first down. We'll see where the forward, forward progress goes. Stanley Forney on the play for the Cougars. The uh, referee's calling a timeout. We have an injured Hornet on the field. I believe it's Matt Palmer. Yes, it is Matt Palmer. It may be that right ankle, Steve, that he's had trouble with all year long. Just getting rounding into shape. Tony Smith will give us a report, I'm sure. Now Taft, the Cougars, cannot allow the Hornets to eat up a lot of time right here, scoring or not. They can't allow one of these four, five, or six minute drives by the Hornet offense. Swayze, 13 carries, 60 yards on the afternoon. 
It's third down and one, 719. And Taft calls a timeout. We have stats coming up here for third quarter. Uh, rushing for Fullerton, 69 for Taft, 75, pretty even. Passing, 131 for Fullerton, 31 for Taft. Total yards, 200 yards for Fullerton, 106 for Taft. First downs, 11 and seven. Penalties, big difference there, four for 30, nine for 80 for Taft. Turnover is another big deal, one for Fullerton and three for Taft. And Matt Palmer being helped out there by Dr. Mack. And we certainly hope he's okay. In the event Fullerton has to punt uh, on this drive or later on, Rick Frank will be doing the punting if indeed Frank is, uh, Palmer is out. Ruling on the day, 17 and 25 for 176 yards, three touchdowns, two of those going to Dave Warner. Warner and as you're talking about Warner, he has eight receptions for 94 yards. Core field the bottom of your screen out of it right now. Ruland fumbles the ball, tries to carry it forward for the first down. We'll see who picked up the, the fumble. Taft says they have it, and Sandejas says that Fulton has a first down. And I think we have, a, we have another injured Hornet on the play, and we do. A lot of fierce hitting going on down there. Maybe Ed Atkinson, number 59 for the Hornets there on the turf as you see the shadow starting to lengthen, lengthen here at uh, Memorial Stadium in Bakersfield. One of the few times that the sun has been out and right now it's a, a blinding glare. At this point it would be into the eyes of the Hornet receivers, although with a 21 to seven lead with seven minutes to go, uh, we would not anticipate them going on top. Right now they will be measuring for the first down and the Cougar defense needs to get the ball back into the hands of the offense, and this would be a great time. And they have the first down. Hornets have the first down, and we have a report from Tony Smith. Left shoulder, you see Matt. Okay, the audio problem down there with Tony. We'll try to get that uh, straightened out. He's trying to tell us about Ma Matt Palmer. Ed Atkinson, uh, number 59, I believe, down on the field. We see the training crew of Bill Chambers and the student trainers, an excellent group, along with Dr. Philip McFarland. The freshman, all CIF performer, stepped in last week for Gene Murphy and did an outstanding job at the tackle position, a position that he is not yeah. used to. And coming off the field, keeping that right leg off the ground, at that point, whenever they're dragging a leg, you cannot be real confident, but we will wait and see what the diagnosis is of the Hornet trainers and physician down there. A lot of people still left here in the stadium. But certainly not over, Taft, a very explosive team. Nash goes left, Sullivan right. Rulin. Sends it down, field flag in the play. Tries to hit Sullivan around the 35 yard line. There is a flag in the play. Looked like it might be a holding call. You have a Taft player limping around. And there's a uh, number 59, Ed Atkinson for the Hornets. Dr. McFarland, as you see there, Bill Chambers trying to work on him. But we have a flag on the play. I think it's gonna be against Fullerton. Stay in the game, guys. Be ready to go. 640 left in the fourth quarter. And it is, they're marching it back. Holding, 57, white, incomplete pass. 10 yard penalty. First Wally Turheimer on the hold. And it's gonna bring up a first down and 20. Colleton and Corfield check in for the Hornets. Sandejas and Colts in the backfield, Nash and Corfield, the receivers. Rulin gives to Colleton up the middle. He gets about the 28 yard line. Ron Colleton in the ball carrier. It's gonna bring up second down and long. 
the Cougar defense is reaching that stage where one uh, of their players has to tackle and the others have got to start stripping the ball. They need a turnover right now. This would be a great spot for them to get it simply because of field position. Also, each time the Hornets run the ball, the clock continues to move. We're down close to six minutes remaining in the contest. So they need a turnover and they need one right now. Taft has two timeouts remaining in the game. Nash left Sullivan right, that's Warner in motion. The give is a sweep to Colleton. Colleton tries to cut it outside, runs it in players, and turns it upfield to about the 35, well short of the first down. We do have a report now from Tony Smith. Okay, let's Ankles. Well, still have that audio problem. Uh, Steve Eiler trying to fix that one and going crazy, I'm sure. Had to come a long way to the, this Well, game we got bits and pieces of it, but I uh, believe Tony was going to give us an injury report on number 59, Ed Atkinson. We'll hopefully get that in bef before the contest is over today. Fortune on third down is three of ten. Hi, Rick. This is going to be third and long, third and about 11 yards. There's some decision to be made here because uh, Gary Rulin and the Hornets with a timeout for the Taft Cougar defense. They want to go over and talk to the defensive coaches and Coach Al Baldock. We said earlier that the Cougars have won this thing on alternating years, starting with 1979, a loss, 1980, a win, 1981, a loss, 1982, a win, and unless something develops quickly, they may go on and keep that alternating streak going. 544, third down 11, the ball in the 34-yard line of Taft, or of the Hornets. Ruling, back to pass. Tries to roll out, gets a lot of time, he's gonna send it up, feel himself, and he gets it to about the line of scrimmage, maybe he gets one. So the Taft defense rises to the occasion, all the receivers covered, and Gary has to eat it. It's gonna be bring up a fourth down. Steve, excellent decision by Gary Rulin. Uh, didn't really have anything open that he wanted to go to. Brought the ball down, kept the clock moving, and let Matt Palmer kick with that wind at his back. Matt Palmer back in there to kick. Apparently he is okay, and he will be kicking from his 20-yard line. John Francis, the deep back. Palmer gets it off just barely, sends off a beauty of a punt. Downfield be picked up by Francis at the 25, and he's going to be brought down to the 29-yard line. Lou Wong in the tackle. A couple other Hornets also. Number 92, Robbie Lindsay also in on it. And Taft will take over first and 10 at their own 29-yard uh, line. Well, it's 4.58, and if they want to score, they better do it here. Frazier's wide right, Garland Voss left. Perez back to pass. Here come the Hornets. He gets away, but he's brought down to the 22-yard line. Sean Cadreau, no, excuse me, Sean Logan on the play. Also, Lance Winger, big number 96. Give Lance has had a ball a game, hasn't he? Sure has. Replay coming in, under pressure. Nelson holds him up. Logan and Winger also in there. And right now, they've got the Cougars in a position they won, and I'm talking about the Hornet defense. Put them into a passing mode. That is not the strength of this Taft team. Perez hands him a first back through. That's Pitts. And I believe... The Hornets have the ball. Yes, indeed, they do. Number 96, Lance Wingert, stripping the ball away and taking it. And the Hornets smell national championship. It's four minutes and 20 seconds away. Lance Wingert having a whale of a game as he has an entire season. Here's the replay. Coming from the inside, ball loose. Let's see who has it on the other side. It comes up with it is Lance Wingert, number 96. We said his dad, who's in the stands today, played for a winning Pasadena team in 1953, 20 years later. The son holding up the family name. Yeah, kick the Hornets have a chance to lock it up right here. Guy left, Corfield right. Swayze and Sandejas in the backfield. Ruling back to pass. Has a lot of time, sends it downfield to Sandejas. He catches it at the 15, and he steps out of bounds. 
pick up a five. It's going to be second and five. Yes! Some of the fans beginning to leave now. As the Hornets are spelling national championship. And if it if indeed it does happen, it's going to be a, a big upset. The Hornets uh, still putting the ball up, even down in his territory. Sendejas having a little bit of a problem, but brings it down, steps out of bounds. That stops the clock. But the Hornets come up with a nice first down effort, six yards. 4-14. Ball on the 14-yard line, second and four. The give is to Colleton. Colleton gets down to about the 12. It's going to bring up third down. Lance Winger, big number 96. And yes, Lance, you may be right. In a few minutes, you could be number one. Steve, it, it may not be premature right now with under four minutes to go to start talking about a national championship for the Hornets. This is not a team that most people uh, would even give credit for winning their own South Coast Conference. Cerritos was thought to be the strength there. They've come through adversity, some a downtime in the middle of the season. They've done an outstanding job. They just might wrap it up here. 3.33, the ball, the clock running. Rulin going to keep it himself at the five. And he's brought down at the four. Very gingerly being, being tackled. A lot of flags on the play. I believe it's going to be offsides against uh, Taft. We'll see what the call is. Appear to be maybe some mix up. Uh, maybe Gary was a, a, a call on Offsides, his own. Offsides, defense, backfill in motion, offense, replay. Well, we get to do it again. Gary Rulin doesn't run with the ball, ball a whole lot, and John Francis, uh, the, one of the cornerbacks there for Taft, realizes it and very gingerly put him down. Thank you, uh, John. Much is made of the uh, how a team peaks and at what point of the season they peak. And in looking at Taft's, uh, the two of their last three games, tough games, uh, tight wins over Pasadena, one point, and a uh, five-point win over rival Bakersfield, 14-9. Uh, to nine. And that could well have been a loss as Bakersfield was uh, driving for the winning score. Uh, and not to say that Taft peaked early or got into a law at this point of the season, but sometimes that happens to you. The Hornets had their law flat in the middle of the season off that bye, a very low point for them. They've been playing well the last three weeks, primarily uh, the big guy, number 11, six foot two, uh, good size, very intelligent player, the quarterback, Gary I'm Rulin. Sorry. The Hornets call a timeout. That's their second. It's third down and one. The Hornets are three of 11 on third down. That all came in the first half. And the players are trying to fire up the fans, and the fans are indeed re responding. John Guy. John Guy's done the it cheers. all. He's officiating and cheerleading <laughs> and catching. The fans are starting to taste it now. Ruling on the day, 15 of 22. 148 yards, big day for Gary Rulin. Thank you, Dave Lewis, for those stats. Third down and one. 3.04 left in the season. Rulin sends Nash left, Sullivan right, Sendejas the fullback, Swayze is the eye back. Warner goes in motion. The pitch is to Swayze, he cuts it up, field at the 10, he has the first down. They've used that play several times to Swayze to that side. And it is a first down for Fullerton. That's inside the 10, I believe, I believe it is. And yes, it is. It's going to be first and goal. Steve, offensively, the Hornets have mixed it up a lot. What they wanted to do coming into today's game was to show Taft some different sets. Although the plays were quite similar to plays they've been running uh, all year long, they wanted to have them coming from different formations, a little bit different movement, and it looks to be successful today. A lot of short stuff, a lot of the underneath stuff under the defensive secondary zone, at, at, uh, at least up to this point, which is almost at the end, been very effective. Sullivan wide right, Nash wide left. Give on the trap is to Swayze. He's dropped at the eight yard line. That's gonna bring up a second goal. 2.10, the clock running down. Taft, has, I believe, has one timeout left. 
Second and goal, the ball on the eight yard line, or seven, ball on the seven. 156, clock is moving. Sullivan left, Nash right, and Dejas and Swayze in the backfield. Rulin hits Palmer at the 12. Palmer sends it upfield, and he's dropped at the five yard line. Palmer did not go out of bounds, and the clock continues to roll at 1.30. While well, the Hornets still throwing the ball, Gary Rulin off to the flat to Palmer. Nash comes back, makes a good block, number 80. One good play by Matt Palmer. Kenny Nash has had a good game. He's done some real good things. He had that interference call against him. There's Garrett Breeland and the Hornet defensive backs. Rourke Kelly, Sean Cadru. One minute left in the season, one minute to national championship. Rulin brings up his troops. There's a flag on the play. Might be too much time. Penalty marker on the play. Lon Brunk is to be going down on the field, get some post game. Dead ball, delay, flight. He's going to have to fly down there. 53 seconds left towards the national championship. The ball will be spotted just outside the 10 yard line. This is third down and goal. Bunch left, Nash right, Sendejas in motion. Ruling back to pass, hits it off, hits his man, that's Swayze. Touchdown, Fullerton! With 45 seconds remaining, Hornets score again, making it 27 to seven. The crowd and the Hornets very happy. Here's the replay here. Ruling back to pass a lot of time. Hits Swayze at the five. Swayze has to jump across and he has the touchdown. Good play by Damon Swayze. So the Hornets, 45 seconds to national championship. Rick Frank to kick. Long the holder, Wally Turheimer the center. There's a the snap, the spot, the kick. It's up. And good. Make that 28 to 7. 28 to 7. And the Hornets are 45 seconds away from their first national championship since 1966. But who would have thought this would have happened? I know I certainly didn't. The Hornets lost a great quarterback in Troy Bardeen and Vern Harris last season. Some great, rece great receivers, Joe Kelly and the like. And who would have thought of coming into this season? He knew they had a good defense, but the offense was very unsure. But the Hornets have scored 28 points against a very, very good Taft team. Back deep for the for Taft will be Cook and Francis. Rick Frank to be kicking off for the Hornets. 45 seconds left. The, the clock will start as soon as the ball is touched. And Rick Frank sends one very deep into the end zone. That's going to be all. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Cougars at their own 20 yard line. So it's all over for Taft, except the slow walking and the fast crying. But for the Hornets, a national championship yes. comes in 45 seconds. Yes, we did it. Very underrated team, especially that offensive line. Very maligned. Very tough season they've had, but these last three games they've been incredible. Perez back to pass. Hits his man at the 25 yard line. That's Frazier. Frazier still going. He's dropped at the 29. I believe he'll be short of the first down. Summer says he has the ball. The clock is stopped for now. It's at 35 seconds. As I said before, Tony Smith and Lon Brunk are down in the field. They're going to get some interviews with Hal Sherbeck in the bunch. It is second down. They're short of the first down by just a half a yard. Hornets are going to go into their dime defense. I mean, six defensive backs. Collierd in there. 
Bobby Sosa. Adam Lowitz coming off the field. And there, as you see, the Taft offensive unit. They've been a good one. They have a couple of world-class sprinters in their backfield. Six of the fastest guys that you're ever going to see. That's what Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Jesperson said earlier in the week in practice. But the Hornets have shut them down. 35 seconds, second and a half a yard. Perez back to pass. And he is tripped up there behind the line of scrimmage. Tripped up that time by number 79 for the Hornets. Dwight Frankie out of Fullerton High School. Dwight Frankie played in a CIF championship last season. They lost it. The ball is sent out of bounds to stop the clock. 11 seconds remaining. Third down and one, 11 seconds remaining. And national championship for the Fullerton College Hornets. The Taft, Taft Cougars, they are the defending national championship champions. They won it last year here in the Potato Bowl against Mount Sac. So not only is uh, Fullerton getting a national championship, but the South Coast Conference is getting a little revenge. Says Frazier right, Voss left, third down and one. Perez gives it to Cook, and he's dropped at the 40-yard line. That's a first down, five seconds. The, the clock is going gonna, is gonna to stop for the uh, movement of the chains. But that's just, that doesn't mean a whole lot because the game is over 28 to seven. And the Fullerton is going to have their first national championship since 1966. The clock is running, two, one, that's it. Fullerton College winning the 32nd annual Potato Bowl 28 to seven, and more importantly, a national championship is theirs. Who would have thought it? 28 to seven. Fullerton has been, <laughs> the press box is even going crazy. Fullerton has been uh, really, what, well, what can you say? They were underdogs against Cerritos. They're underdogs all season long. They win the South Coast Conference Championship. They're underdogs coming into this game and they win the national championship. Just incredible. We're going to ask some reports from uh, Lon Brunk and uh, Tony Smith down on the sidelines. We'll be back with some post-game interviews with the national championship team, the Fulton College Hornets, right after this. I just want to thank a a great number of Orange County fuzzy face young men who played their hearts out for a national championship. And most of all, and most of all, I want to congratulate the greatest coaching staff in the history of the United States. I want to thank I want to thank the Shriners for this opportunity. We at Fullerton certainly accept this with a great amount of pride. And I hope the young children that this game contributed to will be able to one day be able to play like we have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. championship is does belong to Fullerton College. I was a little wry on the date. The last time they won it was 1967. The last Potato Bowl was 1966. I can't even the, the feeling I have right now. Oh, it's it's just great. That's it. <laughs> that was Dave Warner. 96. Lance Winger. Lance Winger coming up podium here.
All right, thanks. We're the best. Oh, we're the best. We're the best. Yeah. Hey, thank you. All right, I want to thank the fans all year for being with us, backing up the Hornets. You guys knew we'd be number one from the beginning. We're number one now. Once a Hornet, you're always a Hornet. And we're national champs, and we couldn't have did it for a better cause. The Shrine Game. All right, we're champions. I love you all. Thank you. Last winger being awarded the and last now, winger. Now for the most valuable, number 11, Gary Rulin. <laughs> Gary Rulin, the quarterback, three team D's. <laughs> number one, I'd just like to thank the Shriners for letting us have an opportunity to play in this game. And I'd like to thank all the people who came with us all the way up here to Bakersfield to watch us beat Tab. Nice shirt! Yeah! 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 Hornets are number one! Okay, we're gonna try to get uh, a couple more interviews down there with uh, Rulin and Lance Winger. Winger winning the defensive uh, most valuable player. Rulin getting the offensive most valuable player. Rulin on the day, 15 and 25, 151 yards, three touchdowns. All right, we have an interview now with Lon Brunk. Well, we have a post-game interview with the coach, head coach of the number one team in the nation. Has a sweet ring to it, doesn't it? It really does, Ron, I tell you. You'd never dream that this could come through. It was un unbelievable. All the way up and down the roster, offensively, defensively, special teams. You talked about the coaches. This can be truly said, this was a great team effort. It really was. They just, they just didn't know when to quit. They, they couldn't believe that they were this good, and, and they just went right on through everything and continued to play hard. And just, you know, everything that you'd want to have happen, they have done it. Just outstanding. I bet I believe there were excellent choices, offensive, defensive players of the game. And Gary Rulin, what can you say? He came back from a, 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 a kind of an average season going into the last two or three games. Young man hung in there and led the Hornets to the uh, national championship. Well, Gary is just one of those class individuals. He says Rangers you know, he, and Vikings. He never quit. He never, never even thought about quitting. It's just a matter of sometimes we have a bad day, and, and he realized that, and he came back and. Worked hard the next day and uh, next week, and from that point on, looked at film and just try to improve and just do the things that you know that are necessarily have to be done in order to be a champion. And, and Gary's that way, just a very a class person, just uh, just a super individual. I'm just so happy for all of them. Lance Winger did a heck of a job, you know. And, you know, you, what can you say that uh, of all the adversities and the injuries, we had two starters out. Uh, you know, there's things that happen that, you know, you can't uh, even, you know, begin to wonder why they would keep on playing, and, and, and but they just did. They, I, I would just want to say this, really. I, I think that a group of young men and a bunch of coaches who have worked very, very hard, I, the defensive staff, Coach Jesperson and Coach Fiola and Coach Mitchell and and uh, Coach Forbes, uh, I just put together an outstanding defense this year. and. And also the offensive uh, staff today put the game plan together. I, I don't believe that uh, we've been able to hold the ball as well. You know, we just kept the football away from them. And the uh, coach Sampson called a beautiful ball game. Uh, coach Thomas had the offensive line blocking well. Coach Camel did a great job with the sideline with and Coach Turk. You know, it's just a, a, a wonderful thing that you can be a, a, be on a staff with a group of guys like that. Coach, you've been a great assistance to us all year long on the Fullerton College Cable Network. Can you do one more thing for me? Can you hold up that trophy that says, number one, the National JC Championship isn't right that, there? Isn't that a great one? Hey, it's Jerry. <laughs> 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 really great. Yeah, that's for sure. We're going to try to get us some more interviews. There's a whole lot of other people here. Uh, number one man for the Hornets today, the quarterback. Number 11 on the uniform, but number one in the hearts of fans. Gary, I was just talking to Coach Hal Sherbeck, and uh, we were impressed with you over the last three or four weeks. It uh, appeared as if Gary Rulin decided, 
I'm taking over this ball club. We're going to drive them to the number one spot. Well, they just told me, you know, that I, I had to take control out there and I had to just go out and play play for fun and not put so much pressure on myself. And I think that really helped me out in the last couple games. It must be nice also beyond playing for a national championship team, Gary. It must be real great to be with this coaching staff. It sure is. I've been here for three years and um, it's, I mean, it's been the best few years of my life, you know, and to top it off in my last game like this, it's just like, you know, fulfilling the impossible dream. Gary, we thank you for the thrills, and I know there's a lot of people here on the field that want to offer their congratulations. Uh, again, the number one, as I asked uh, Coach Hal Sherbeck, has a sweet ring to it, doesn't it? It sure does. That's what we've been striving for all season, and we finally got it, and it's just, it's just the greatest feeling in the world. Gary Rulin, the MVP of the 1983 Potato Bowl. Gary, good luck. Thank you. Well, we have a few other people here we'll try to get a hold of if we possibly can. Uh, also down here, Lance Wingert. Uh, a few other Hornets offensively. Dave Warner had a big game. It was just big all the way around. People milling around down here. Nobody really wants to leave. They want to taste all of it as much as they can possibly get. We're going to try to get Lance Wingard over here if we can. He's being uh, a lot of people trying to get him also. Press down here, radio. A lot of people going on, but I think we're going to be able to drag him over here. If we can, again, the 32nd annual Potato Bowl today in Bakersfield, a day that had some uh, dim beginnings. And uh, let's see if we can hang on. <coughs> Trying to weave our way through the crowd here. Lance Wingert, sophomore out of St. Paul. Lance, defensive player of the game. Your dad played. 1953, I believe, for Pasadena. Sometime way back then, yeah. Uh, way back when, that's, champions that, then. that's a full 20 years ago, and uh, the Wingert name holds strong in Bakersfield. All right, that's the way it should be. <laughs> Lance, great. was there a different defensive philosophy going in against this staff with a wing T offensive set? Uh, no, we, you know, we played the same way from game one, just get after people, penetrate, get through the, oh, no. the line, and uh, take, you know, we had to contain their speed. That was the thing this week, contain. You know, don't let them get outside and let, the, let everybody pursue and get after people and cause fumbles. Lance, I heard you say earlier in the year you came to Fullerton because they were winners. That's right. I came here because I wanted to win. And that's what we did. We win, to, win to, we win together, we won together, and now we're champs. And number one in the nation is not too bad to hang no, on your man. it's not mantle. too bad at all. It's, it's great. Been, it's been a good two days up here in Bakersfield. It sure has. We had a good time. We had, we had fun. Everything was, you know, we have a, a class team. Things were arranged here perfect for us, and now we're going to go home in class and winners. Lance, good luck to you. I know you'll be going to a, a good four-year school somewhere. It's been a great potato bowl. Uh, it sure has. Thank you. Lance Winger, the defensive player of the game, all over the field. And we'll try to get Dave Warner if we can. He, we had him at one time. Again, people are all over the place. Number 88, Dave Warner. And I'll try to send my buddy Dave Ezra over to get Dave Warner. Dave, a big game. This is a, a game that he needed. The tight end was a, an integral factor in the game today because of the type of things that they were giving to them. Dave Warner, tight end, 6'4", 235, a sophomore. Hey, guy, you saved the, uh, the best for the last, huh? Yeah, well, I tried. I tried. Dave, was it a, well, the philosophy was to try to get open to you. Was it something they saw in the Taft defense that would yeah, allow well, they, you to be more open? They dropped a lot of zone, and, you know, just getting in an open zone and just stopping. It wasn't, you know, just getting to the zone and stopping. They were dropping a lot of zone. Were you in that second layer, so to speak, or plateau, yeah. as Coach Sampson calls yeah. it? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, you, you like to hit people once you get the ball, too, don't you? Well, I try. <laughs> kind of hard to tackle. <laughs> well, sometimes. Yeah, I get... <laughs> Dave, it was a nice uh, gesture, and I think well earned that you, uh, you came up with an award today. Oh, I feel great about that. You know, I'm lucky. You know, everyone played hard. It's it's hard to it's hard to take a award like that when you know how hard everyone else played. But you know, I just feel I'm lucky. It was great. Dave, congratulations to you. Uh, we have a lot of other people we'd like to talk to, but. Um, well, they're all hanging around. There's a lot of people we can say. The 32nd annual Potato Bowl is just about all done. We've had a great time doing it. Hey, hope you've had a great time watching it. Let's send it back up to Steve Hassler in the booth and tell you about all the great people who've been on the Fullerton College Cable Network all year long.
All right, thank you, Lon, and thank you for those interviews. Once you want to clear up uh, exactly uh, who the awards went to. Dave Warner got the offensive MVP. Lance Winger got the defensive MVP. MVP. Gary Rulin had the most valuable player of the game. Rulin on the game, 15 of 25, 151 yards, four touchdowns. Warner, nine catches, 98 yards. Winger had a couple of sacks and a whole lot of tackles and a whole big, great game. All right, hey, thank you for joining us here in the Fuller College Cable Network. Special thanks to uh, all the people that have helped us down the truck and in the stands, uh, executive producer Mike Moore, uh, game producer Rod Foster. Thank you to all of you all over. Steve Eiler doing a good job in the technical win. Uh, next time you're going to see us, January 7th, Fullerton basketball, Fullerton versus Cerritos College. They're the defending state champs. For Tony Smith, Lon Brunk, Dave Lewis, and I'm Steve Astor with a reminder. Fullerton winning the 32nd annual Potato Bowl 28-7. And they are national champions. We'll see you later.